Close your eyes and think of a motorcycle. Now, for me, even though I love ADVs and from time to time I enjoy sport bikes, this is what I think about. Something that is refined, classy, and distinguished. Something that James Bond would be riding. So let's find out what makes the Triumph T120 a timeless classic in this episode of Beyond the Ride. The Bonnie made its debut in the late 1950s and quickly gained a reputation for its exceptional performance and distinctive design. Throughout the decades, the bike evolved with advancements in engineering and technology, becoming a timeless symbol of British motorcycling heritage. Its legacy is deeply intertwined with the golden era of motorcycling. And today's iteration of the T120 pays homage to its predecessors, but incorporating modern features that make it appeal to riders of all generations. Let's go through the specs. Powering the bike is a liquid-cooled 8-valve single overhead camo 1,200cc parallel twin engine that pumps out 79 horsepower at 6,550 rpm and 104 newton meters of torque at 3,500 rpm. Front brakes are twin 310mm discs, Brembo two-piston floating caliper, of course with ABS. And for the rear, you get a single 255mm disc, Nissan two-piston caliper, also with ABS. Front suspension are cartridge forks, while the rear are twin shocks with preload adjustment. The front tire is size 18 100 by 90 while the rear is size 17 150 by 70 The dash looks timeless and classy, perfect for this bike. Twin dial analog speedometer and tachometer with LCD multifunctional display. Now when I look at the bike, I just really enjoy it. I love it. I mean, I think to myself, this is the way the bike has looked since the late 1950s. And I guess if you've mastered that, you don't really need to change it too much. Now, I've said it before that I don't really love the rubber in the front forks, but I actually don't mind it on this because I think it kind of suits the aesthetic of the bike being a timeless classic. Aesthetically, in my opinion, this is what a motorcycle should look like. And every time I park the bike, I walk away just a little bit, I find myself turning around and checking it out all the time. Now, the fit and finish of Triumph bikes have always been top-notch. And I just don't find myself thinking, okay, the manufacturer kind of skimped on these areas. I just think the way I look at it, it's just everything is quality. I do find it kind of funny that they, all their classic bikes have this fake carb right here. Um, I guess that's their attention to detail because they really want to uh, pay tribute to the past. And that's why they have this, uh, this, this fake carb um, hiding the instruments or the electronics of the motorcycle. So something like this, right? In some motorcycles, the badge is typically glued on there, or maybe there's a you know, two double-sided sticker, but this, it's bolted on right here. So, I mean, just like that, you know, stuff, uh, small stuff like that, that tell you that they really care about the, the details, and that's something that's really important. Even the stitching on the seat, everything is top-notch. Everything is definitely high-end. And even the welding, right? I mean, it, just the welding job is just always so good on Triumph motorcycles. Now, speaking of the seat, uh, it is nice and comfy, but you also have that nice uh, Triumph logo right there in the back. And then it's comfortable enough for one or two if you have a date. Sign on if you have a date. But, uh, <laughs> but it is nice and comfortable. I mean, it is nice and plush. I can, you know, I find myself riding long distances with no issues with this bike. The fuel tank capacity is 14.5 liters, which is pretty standard for these type of bikes. But the fuel consumption is an impressive 23 kilometers per liter. Of course, that changes depending on how you ride. Now, the wet weight of the bike is 236 kilograms, which is actually a little bit on the heavy side. However, because the center of gravity is kind of low, you don't really feel it too much. The seat height is a very Pinoy friendly 790 millimeters. I'm 5'6 with a 764 millimeter inseam. And that is the situation, not bad whatsoever. All right, so let's do a quick sound test. I always love the sound of Triumph Twins, but here we go.
I mean, that exhaust note is really classy. Not too loud, not too soft. But because we are in the Philippines, I would probably still want it a little bit louder than that. But still, sounds really good. Really, really good. Okay, so the seating position is very neutral and comfortable. I mean, the, the type of bike that it is, it's, it's perfect for it. You don't get much bend on your knees and it's just very relaxed. The bike does have a robust steel tube frame, providing stability and agility at the same time, which makes it maneuverable in both the urban setting and of course the open road environment. So I've been using this bike for several days in very heavy Manila traffic and also in open roads with some twisties here and there. And I have nothing to complain about. I think the bike handled everything really, really well. It feels right at home in the city and despite being caught in heavy traffic, I didn't feel that much heat coming from the bike. And the suspension is decent. I feel it absorbed the nasty potholes fairly well. And keep in mind, the non-stop rain in Manila for the past couple of weeks have made these potholes more like craters. The brakes work very, very well. Of course, uh, well, I mean, the front brakes are Brembo's, but the rear, which are the Nissan calipers, I think, uh, at least in my opinion, could use a little bit of a stronger bite. I mean, yes, you don't use the rear brakes that much or that often, um, but I still would prefer something a little bit stronger uh, for the rear. Now, it may be a retro bike, but you do get modern electronics, including, of course, the different ride modes that it comes with, the traction control, and a user-friendly digital display. As I ride a bike, the word smooth always comes to mind. And the bike looks smooth, but it also is one of the smoothest machines I've ever ridden. There's really no vibration or very little, whether you're at the low end or the high end of the rev range. The bike is as smooth as a baby's bottom. I just love the way the bike makes me feel when I'm riding it. And it's really because of the T120's design, which is a nod to its heritage, featuring classic lines, a sculpted fuel tank, and retro-inspired details that really exude elegance. The bike is very approachable, it's easy to ride, but it's also not boring. I honestly thought I would be a little bit bored with the bike, but in all honesty, I'm not, because it can be quick. Yes, it's happy to glide along and just cruise. It does that very, very well, and it does enjoy being at the low end, um, just like most twins. But if you decide to push it a little bit, it would be happy doing that as well. The truth is, it's got plenty of power. I don't find myself wanting more. It's really, really a great all-arounder. Now, if I were to nitpick a little bit, I wish the headlight was a little bit brighter. I had to ride at night coming home from an event which I actually hosted recently and thought the headlight was bright, but I wish it was brighter. But that's just me. I don't really enjoy riding at night uh, too often unless I'm on a big ADV with auxiliary lights. And that's the thing. I don't think I would want to put aux lights on this bike because it might ruin the aesthetics. Again, I'm nitpicking here. Yes, uh, there's really not much I can say about this bike that's negative. Maybe the rear brakes could be a little bit stronger. The headlight, I understand it's a retro bike, so you want something uh, that has a retro feel to it. Uh, maybe the, the turning radius isn't great, but it's the same for pretty much the type of bike that it is. It's the same for the other bikes. So there's really not many things I can say negative about this bike, uh, but let's wrap it up and head back to the office. Not too obvious by now that I really do love the bike. I mean, if I were to only own one motorcycle, in all honesty, this actually might be it. Yes, even over the Scrambler XE, uh, because that bike's a little bit too tall for me. A lot of people always talk about, when, when somebody says end game bike, 
Usually, people talk about big ADVs like the Ducati Multistrada or the BMW GS. But in my opinion, this is actually a great endgame bike. It's a bike that if you purchase early on in your riding journey, you may want to keep for a very, very long time or forever. The Triumph T120 stands as a testament to the brand's commitment to combining tradition and innovation. Its remarkable specs, captivating design details, and rich history make it a standout choice for those who seek a classic yet contemporary riding experience. But that does come at a price, as the 2023 Triumph T120 starts at 920,000 Philippine pesos. Yes, it's not exactly cheap, but if the bike is timeless and you keep it, well, pretty much forever and maybe pass it on to your children, it might just be worth it. For more information about this bike and other MCs out there, log on to www.motorgill.com.ph. I'm Gene Rufino. Hope you guys enjoyed going beyond the ride.